Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Adam, Marketing Specialist, and I'll be your moderator. Tonight's webinar was originally going to feature Dr. Franklin Schull. However, Dr. Schull had a last-minute issue and was unable to speak tonight. Luckily, we were able to secure Dr. Shay Tolbert, who will discuss step-by-step -step how to 3D print surgical guides using the Sprint Ray Pro 95 3D printer. Dr. Tolbert currently serves as an affiliate professor at the Medical University of South Carolina College of Dental Medicine and as an adjunct professor at Clemson University Department of Science. In addition to that, Dr. Tolbert lectures on the practical applications of technologies, including digital impressions, CAD CAM dentistry, 3D imaging, and 3D printing applications in dentistry. Before we get started, we've got a few reminders for you. At any point during today's webinar, we do encourage your participation. Please type any questions you might have into the Q&A section of your control panel, and we'll answer them live at the end of the presentation. Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand, and this webinar is sponsored by Sprint Ray. Dr. Tolbert, welcome. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone, joining in tonight. Uh, today, we're going to cover step-by-step -step 3D printing surgical guides. So first, I really want to thank the sponsors. So Henry Shine for hosting and Sprint Ray for sponsoring. And really tonight is kind of a funny story. I was actually signed up for this webinar. It's not a joke. It's serious. Um, and we had unforeseen circumstances with the original assigned speakers. So I got called up on Friday and, hey, I, I'm here to tell you, I'm ready to go. I'm passionate about what we do with our technology and our practice. Tonight is an energy-packed webinar to show you what's newest Sprint Ray and surgical guides. You've already lost an hour of sleep this weekend with the clock set back. So after this webinar, I don't want you to feel like you lost another hour. I'm gonna make this fun and worth your time. So let's, let's strap in. All right, 3D printing surgical guides. So kind of overview of today's topic. So introduction, I'll give you a little bit more background about me. Um, the 3D printing journey, really kind of how I got started um, how we started implementing it, how we really got going, and where we are now. Uh, surgical guide workflows is kind of the focus tonight. So scan, plan, design, and create surgical guides. So I really want to show you the workflows that we, that we find very efficient in our office um, and that to help you succeed with the technology. Sprint Ray Surgical Guide Design Service is a new offering on the dashboard uh, membership through Sprint Ray. And it's extremely helpful for an efficient workflow. So we'll kind of show you what that is since it's new and how to make sure you add it to your, um, to your practice. Rayware demos. We can show you how, how we print guides and how we design. But if we're not showing you kind of the in-between on how you send it to your printer, um, I really want to give you a little bit of that sizzle, the sauce on how to use the Rayware and how to make sure you get to the print successfully. And then clinical cases, I'll show you exactly what we do every day in our office to make this um, part of our success. And really along the way, lots of tips, lots of nuggets along the way. So again, I want to make this action packed and worth your time. So ultimately, we want to get here fast and efficiently. 3D printing surgical guides. It's a game changer in your practice. So let's get to it. But first, really, our digital journey. So we're all on this journey to serve our patients better. I really wanna share with you my dental journey, digital journey and how we integrated Sprint Ray's 3D printing workflows in our offices. So we plan, we implement, and then we've transformed. So a little bit of introduction, a little bit more about me. I practice in Greenville, South Carolina. So we're really a big engineering town. So the patient base here really understands and loves CAD CAM, 3D imaging, milling, and 3D printing. They can kind of talk the same love language because they use softwares to manufacture products like tires, uh, Michelin, um, airplane engine, engines at GE, uh, buildings from Floor Daniel, and then uh, even the, some of the some of the fastest cars you'll ever see with BMW here built right in Greenville. So uh, Greenville is really located between Charlotte and Atlanta, but Greenville's got a lot to offer. So once you break free out of your COVID break and travel again, come see us. So life is fun and it's really busy. So my kids' schedules are now even busier than mine. So I have two kids, 10 and seven year old, and they're into a lot of different things. So it's all about 
a good work-life balance. So we're all focusing on fast, efficient workflows tonight. So really, honestly, so you can have more time for the things that matter the most, your family. And so with my work life, my other extended family, that we have six doctors at my office. I'm part of a private, private group practice. So I'm one of the senior founding partners. So in total, we have 24 entities, uh, 14 general uh, dental practices, five ortho, two pedo, and a kind of extension and perio, and uh, our newest hot uh, practice offering is sleep medicine. So my role really um, as a senior doc at Brushy Creek, we all have, and, and with my partners, we all have different strengths and workflows and we, and we work with really good teamwork for the highest patient care. So we, I really love my group of doctors we work with. We're just part of my family. So uh, my background, I went to Clemson University, went to a medical school in Charleston, a dental school down there in USC, did a uh, AEGD residency at the University of Florida in Clearwater, Tampa. Um, at the location there. And then I've been in private practice with family dental health um, for over a decade. So, but my foundation, my background at uh, the residency was really started off with comprehensive dentistry. So really this presentation is in dedication and love and memory of uh, Dr. Pete Dawson, who taught me comprehensive dentistry, serving our patients and our community love and passion for our profession and life in general. So this, these two pictures are pretty cool because it was like my residency in 2008 and 2009 on the top. And then at the Chicago midwinter meeting in 2019 is the last time I think Dr. Uh, Dawson got to do this public presentation. Um, but that's a little bit about my foundation and background. Also launched digital, digital dentistry. That's a, a company I founded in 2016 to create fun, continuing education events for all things uh, dentistry. And we have like a need for speed series, which is sitting around fun things um, and that, that fun things that are fast. So we're all about fast, efficient workflows so you can get the most out of your technology. And so we kind of host events. We travel and partner with other speakers in the industry and just have fun with it. So kind of check us out and see what you're doing. And then uh, shout out uh, to anyone that's on here. I've had... Um, different dentists uh, and dental students and, and college students aspiring to go into our profession. Um, but shout out to my, uh, my roots there at MUSC in South Carolina, Dr. Wally Renee is the uh, founder of a digital dentistry residency. So all the workflows you're seeing here, uh, there, there's a deep dive into this. So if you're in dental school and you're watching this, make sure you look into this program. It's one of the, the hottest new things available. It's basically a process residency that all digital. So check it out. But full disclosure, um, I am a key opinion leader for Sprint Ray. They are sponsoring this event tonight. Um, but really, I believe in this technology. It makes me a better dentist every day, and it gives my patients more comfortable experiences, more predictable, and better outcomes. So I was a Sprint Ray customer first. So my belief in the technology, the passion for dentistry, is what led me to continue my partnership and speak for these wonderful companies. So we use this technology every day in our practice, and I really want to share with you our journey and how we use it. But also, there's other tech, um, tech companies that I, I like that um, we educate and host events and plan events with. So you'll see a little bit of this technology sprinkled into my presentation, how we tie it all together. But Sprint raised the focus tonight in 3D printing surgical guides specifically. So it takes a team effort. So this is my daughter. She's the middle flyer here and she's got her game face on. <clears throat> but it really takes a team effort. If you're if, you just have to see if you're ready to, to really dive in. So we're, we're all here helping each other. Some days we're the base. Some days we're the spotter. Some days we're the flyer. In dentistry and technology, really, you know, some days we play different roles. And in learning new technology, like you are joining us with this webinar tonight, 3D printing is really not all that different. We're all helping each other get there in its community. So have fun with it. So I would like to give a shout out to, to some of my bases, some of my flyers, everyone that's kind of helped me along the way. Um, Dr. Augusty Alavera, Dr. Wally Renee, Donnie Murray, Kurt Bally. And Dr. Baron Gruder, they've all been so part of my team to really help me fly. But, um, you know, some days you're the base, some days you're the spotter, some days you're the flyer. 
we want to make sure you get there and uh, 3D, 3D printing with your surgical guys. So our uh, 3D printing journey here. So really, I got into 3D printing because I thought it was cool. I saw my mentors doing it and my colleagues getting in the game. And I just was kind of fascinated by it. I was already doing digital dentistry. I was really into CAD CAM and milling and CBCT technology and planning my implants. But, you know, I had a little, I had something missing uh, and 3D printing really filled that. And you'll see why. So I bought, you know, I just started, I bought a cheap printer. Thanks August. Uh, that was one of our, you know, the first things I did was I printed a Yoda head. So I just thought that was a rite of passage. We printed a skull and I was just hooked. And I, you know, and I kind of went into do-it-yourself methods. There's different softwares and hardwares with printers that are not made for dental and post-processing lab. Like we, you know, we just bought stuff on Amazon, um, Tupperware and nail bed ovens. It's kind of like a mad scientist, but it really wasn't an organized approach. It wasn't very efficient and it had a lot of failures, but basically a bunch of, I bought a bunch of 3D printers and I had, and I had fun with it. So we had, I had printers for dental, printers for fun and toys. I became addicted became more refined in the technique and process. And really Sprint Ray was integral in, in, in helping me settle in. So I got my first real dental printing set up. And in our office, our applications took off fast. There's so many softwares. You can go down all kinds of different rabbit holes. Some are easier and some are not so easy. So Sprint Ray just makes it easy um, from the software to the hardware. And then, like I kind of mentioned earlier, I kind of... Uh, dove in on a 3D printing tour. August go, um, really was the man and really was the guy that I looked up to in the industry of 3D printing. And he was doing these tours and I participated in them. And then I got to join him as an assistant in the crowd, kind of learning, helping the participants keep up in the software. And I learned so much. I got to know the players in the industry, the different companies, um, the different softwares. I got to interview them and kind of seeing who's hot and who's not and who's really supporting dentistry, who's supporting dentists for 3D printing. And then launched digital dentistry, you know, I talked about good workflows. We know we had our first 3D printing party. It's called the need for speed. It's all about fast, efficient workflows. So look out for some more in the future. So we refined our workflows and we've, you know, we've done it the easy way, easy way. We've done it the hard way. We've done it the slow way. We've done it the fast way. And I really want to show you how to do efficient and fast. So I really, you know, we found our match that aligned with our philosophies. And that was Sprint Ray. But really, it's not the end. It's only the beginning because 3D printing is a journey and there's so many cool things you can do with it. Um, and with in five years, my opinion, I think every dental office will be 3D printing. And pretty much you already are. You're probably getting back cases if you're just starting 3D printing or you haven't yet. You're already getting back cases from your labs that are 3D printed models. And you're probably paying a lot for them. But again, I found my match aligned, that aligned with my philosophies. And Sprint Ray was the deal. So the uh, Amir... Mansouri is the co-founder and CEO of Sprint Ray. I fell in love with the story. The company is dental based. It's nothing else. And it's uh, from the top down, this company was very, very good connection for me. So it's easy, fast, reliable, customer service, and it's growing with dentist needs. So you got to choose your weapon. What's your weapon of choice? For me, Sprint Ray. You know, you've got the Moonray S is what we started. We've graduated to the uh, Pro 95, and then on the way is the Pro 55. So we're finding the applications and we're getting our return on investment. But this is kind of what we use every day in our offices. And like I said, when we started, I, I just saw other people printing. So I just didn't want to sit on the sidelines and watch someone else have all the fun. It just looked fascinating and fun to me. And I love CAD CAM and technology. So really, it was just a no-brainer for us. Um, if you're in the college football like, like we are in here in the South, that's Kirk Herb Street on the left. And, um, and shout out to one of my my best friends and uh, dentist in Charlotte, North Carolina, Dr. Antoine Harriet. But on the right side, you see me sitting on the bench there on the sidelines working with the sports medicine uh, department. But, you know, I didn't want to want to sit back and watch anymore. I was ready to get in the game. And August got me in the game. I was a sucker. I bought the, the printer to make toys. I brought the little printer to start to try to use it in my office at a very uh, cost effective way. But, um, you know, we started, but honestly, I wasn't the first one in my family to 3d print. So I showed my daughter all these things I was doing. And she said, daddy, come here. I'll be right back. And she brought me this yellow heart here that says, I love you. She 3d printed that in elementary school. They already have them in the elementary school library. So, I mean, 
you know, I got to give her a shout out because she was actually the first 3D printer in the family, not me. I thought I was the cool one. First thing we printed, Yoda head. And I have to shout out to Dr. Jeff Bloomquist and my assistant, Tanya Hall. They, uh, we got the printer, our first printer. And, you know, I had something to go to that evening. They knew how excited I was and they unboxed it and they, and they, uh, they put it together and they sent the first print. This is the next day. This is the first thing we found. And there's all kind of different things you can print. Toys, funds, skulls, you know, it's all fun. But here, you know, we really want to get into the dental application. So I started looking at the softwares and having some failures. I tried to 3D print my very first smile design uh, model and didn't go so well. You know, the patient was uh, scheduled the next morning. The, the night before, I queued the print. It's going to take a few hours. So I got there the next morning. And this is what it looked like on the lower right. It was separated. It didn't, didn't work. So I was a little frustrated. So we had a lot of failures. But, you know, it's a journey. Each step has taught me something, especially the failures. And so this is a picture of my son and I walking into school one day. And I just thought it was a good analogy for, you know, some of the things we talk about. But our, the mentors and colleagues that help really pick us back up. And a lot of people help hold my hand. And then we had breakthroughs. So sometimes you're the leader and sometimes you're the follower, but you know, we're all in this together. And so this was really our first real 3D printer setup, the Moonray S. Uh, and we just got going with it. And this is actually, I set it up in our um, ortho office, which shares, uh, it's actually next door to my general office. And um, we just started printing and we really saw the impact. And so then we grew it. So we went from the Moonray S to the Pro 95. And my orthodontist, uh, Dr. Lance Fogel in particular, uh, and Dr. Andy Marshall, they really took off with 3D printing. So applications in orthodontics are, are really, really efficient. And so we had this kind of puzzle piece that was missing. So our digital dentistry puzzle, you know, assuming you have all these pieces or you're building it, you know, what's missing? You know, you have a scanner, you got a CBCT, you have your mill, but really, you know, who has all these things? And if you do, who knows how to use them all together? That's really the secret sauce. That's when, when the real ROI comes. You can have all these toys, but if you don't know how to use them all together fast and efficiently, then, you know, you're just not going to succeed. So let's, let's kind of dive in and focus on the 3D printing portion. So that was the missing portion for us. And that's how we got it going. Um, you can talk about ROI, looking at the cost of what you're paying for your digital smile design for your design and your models versus, you know, designing and printing them yourself and consumables and break it down to each different categories. It just goes on. So look at your ROI of the numbers. But really, in my opinion, same day, fast, Accurate workflows are the key for your ROI. Something that works, you're not going to get frustrated with and have a bunch of failures. Sprint Ray, the Pro 95, the Pro 55, and really the Moon Ray S has been a tank for us. Can print models fast. So now that we can have same day workflow options. And with Sprint Ray's blazing fast speed, it's actually a reality. I've been there. I've told you earlier, I've done it the slow way, the hard way. I want to do it the fast and the easy way. Same day workflows in dentistry is where we see the biggest. So we have workflows for it. And I'll show you some of that tonight. And we can continue this later with another part of the series. But smile design, same day trial smiles, surgical guides, ortho, starting your ortho the same day, crowns with lab quality provisionals. We can 3D print crowns now, y'all, that are beautiful and strong. And occlusal guards is like my new love right now. But you can all do this in efficient workflow same day. So don't get stuck in the weeds. Don't get stuck just looking at all the numbers and can you do this or that? It's possible and it needs to be streamlined, but the real ROI is better dentistry, a better patient experience and the lab results. When you're the manufacturer, you're gonna be in better control and it's gonna be cost-effective. Believe me, you will pay off or you'll be able to pay your, um, your sprint rate, your investment in very fast. And then engineering, art, fun, it becomes an addiction. You see how excited I am about 3D printing, a little bit about what we've done. So yeah, you got me on the printer now. So kind of maybe kind of told you kind of why, and then you're kind of pretty excited or you already have one, but you're not putting all the pieces of the digital puzzle together. So what are we printing for in dentistry? Ortho models, aligners, retainers, bracket trays, 
that is the game changer for us when we started. That's how we got into it. My orthodontists have taken off and really they're making their own aligners and, and volume. And it's just how, and it's just been a very, very good investment in, in, the, in just that category alone. But there's so much more. Surgical guides we're going to talk about tonight. Dental, uh, dental models just in general. Smile design wax up models. Having control of that. Occlusal guards, dentures, crowns, bridges, veneers. There's so much more on the horizon. It's just the tip of the iceberg. So I'll give you a brief touch on each of those topics and maybe some hot tips. So ortho aligner models, especially, like I said, you can print in volume and create your ortho aligners in-house. And so this is the kind of a screenshot on my phone. I love Sprint Ray with dashboard. It's integrated. And so I know when the print's done, I get an alert, I get an email, and that's exactly what it looks like when I open it on my phone. You see the total print time for all those models on a vertical print. Um, and you can start aligner cases same day. Our orthodontists use a, 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 a software card Spark with Ormco, and they can, they can plan and scan, plan, and 3D print models and start an aligner same day treatments. The workflow is there. And also, um, you can just build a job at home and, and go on the run. So make sure you set up your printer ready to print. And then when you get home, you could uh, use your software and then you could VPN and send the print. And then you get that email just like I showed you below when it's done. So you show up the next morning and all those are done. You're not waiting two hours when you get there in the morning. It's ready to go. All right, surgical guides. So surgical guides, uh, the top picture with the guide I'm holding and that's glowing in the middle was my very first surgical guide. It's like our first baby. Like it changed how we do our surgeries. And this is one of my favorite topics to show you. And you'll see why, because it just makes surgery and makes, it helps everyone win, the patient, the doctor. And then when you get to the restoring part, it just makes sense. So surgical guides. So make sure, uh, you know, when you're getting into surgical guides, don't just think of, of onesie, twosie, or just printing for yourself. Because one of the best tips I have for you tonight is when you make, when you get into making surgical guides for your specialists, they will then start referring you cases because they want to work with a dentist that knows how to use uh, technology and how to make their outcomes better and easier. This was a screenshot from a post we put on social media a few years ago. And we were dropping off surgical guys that we were planning. And, you know, you see my case notes on there. And then it changed the game for me because I was working with specialists I'd never worked with before. It kind of flipped the script. They started referring to us. So how cool is that? So I used to only make surgery, uh, the guides for myself. But now I do the process for every single patient. The workflows I'm going to show you with 3D printing the surgical guides, every single patient. The patient... Case acceptance went way up because they see you know what you're doing and the fear factor goes down. We 3D print for smile design guides. It's one of my favorite things. So we can um, take a smile, do a simulation, 3D print our models for our suck down for our uh, temp, uh, provisional stents. We can even 3D print provisional shell provisionals, reline them. And so you can have it a fast, efficient approach. So smile design is really cool. And, you know, a hot tip for this would be if you have multiple smile options on your workup, you can, you can print multiple models very fast and efficiently. And when you do your trial smile, your consult visit to kind of use your putty wash to try it in, you could try in a few uh, different cases, uh, a four unit versus the six unit versus an eight unit before you even start. So it cuts down on chair time when it's time to go, when you actually have the case of seven and trying to go. And it helps drive home a better case of seven and a better outcome, especially for a patient on the fence for like a four unit case versus an eight unit case. And then also a good tip would be the 3D print, the before and after models to take home. They show their spouse, increases the case of seven. It's really good. And so occlusal guards, our new love, our biggest tip for that is really print them an extra one so they can take to the lake house or the travel bag. It doesn't take any more time to print extra. So think about these things. When you go through each different workflow, you're going you're gonna to kind of learn new things. But Keystone Splint Soft so is, the, is the new material I'm using for splints, and I just love it. It's like my new favorite thing. And so... With Sprint Ray, they have third-party resins that they take time to approve and uh, join in their arsenal 
and it's integrated into the software and the hardware to work. It's been tested and it just works, but Keystone Sprint Soft is good. So just kind of showing you how we 3D print our, um, our guards and that on the video on that lower left, you have the um, little base there. Thank you, Dr. Baron Gruder, because that helped me so much. On the right side, you have your traditional supports and it's a little bit tedious cleaning some of that off versus uh, putting on that support. So that's a good tip for you. But the main tip is print multiple guides, uh, um, excuse me, multiple occlusal guards and give them the extra one. Um, they'll love you for it. Your patients will love you. And then dentures, uh, that's my first 3D printed denture. So I'm just now getting to that, into that world. So I'm super excited about it. And you can print a tip with it. You could print multiple try-ins cost effectively with like a next dent or even to make just a, a quick backup that you don't even stain the pink on just as a, a backup in case they break the really good one, they have something to go. Or you just save the file and you can have it for the weekend. They lose their denture. Um, Crowns, bridges, veneers. So new stuff happening in uh, digital all the time, but we're doing our first uh, cases now and this just got approved. Um, FDA cleared the Bego Varseo Smile Crown Plus and the Smile Temp. It's uh, FDA 510 cleared for, uh, and it fulfills all the requirements for class two and two A medical devices. And then uh, really cool applications we can do. Um, Printing crown bridges of veneers. All right. So my 3D printing journey. So we kind of talked about what we're printing. Okay. And, and we're going to focus on the surgical guide. So there's a lot of softwares, softwares that we found to be um, very helpful in our journey. Uh, but we're focusing today and you'll see a little bit of all this in there. So we found many applications in the office for 3D printing and it really just took off for us. So there's so many softwares, but we just kind of dug in. And before we could print, we had to learn. Um, so we'll go over the workflows tonight, but some, a software breakthrough breakthrough for me was this when sprint ray came up with the auto base. So we go from a raw scan to the print. I had to kind of fumble around a mesh mixer for a while to figure out how to do this. And there are softwares that know how to auto base. Now Plymec or Remexis has one with their model analyzer, um, I'm sure a lot of the other scanners out there have some of these features, but this was a breakthrough for me. This was like jaw dropping for me when this happened. So we went from raw scan to printing very fast, but this works and it works really well as part of their premium subscription. It's worth every penny because you can go straight from raw scan to print very fast. So surgical guide workflows. So 3D printing take home rules. All right. So you have to understand the technical process. Doctors need easy solutions. You need a clean process and you need a frictionless workflow. So what does that all mean? Let me take a step back. So what does that all mean? So some people want to do it all and all digital everything. If you're CAD CAM, you're milling, you're 3D printing, you're mastering every step of the workflow. Some people want to do it all. You're DIY at it all. So it's kind of like the dentist that used to pour their own models and um, mark their dyes and wax up their cases and cast their gold crowns because they loved the process. I love 3D printing, but I want everyone, no matter what your, your, your journey is, I want you to love the process. So we, sometimes we just need it easy. We need it quick, but we don't want to sacrifice on the quality. So SprintRay has the solutions to the complete the workflows and especially with our design service, which you'll see. So what's your workflow? So you can start scanning. You just, you're just starting, let's say. You're scanning, but you're outsourcing your design. You're paying for that. And you're outsourcing your print. You're paying for that. Not very cost effective, but you're in the game. You're doing it with the technology way. I like it. All right. The other way would be you do some more. You're scanning and you're outsourcing the design, especially cost effective and especially fast will be Sprint Ray's new design service, which you'll see. And then you print it. It's optimized straight to go to your printer. That's fast and efficient and cost effective. 
Or you may want to do it all. You want to be the aficionado. You're kind of all digital, everything. You scan, you plan, you create, you print, you're doing it all. You're really taking it off. And that's what we like to focus with launch digital dentistry to take it to the next level. But really, all the workflows work. So you need to find your need and your comfort level. So don't cheat the process. Make sure you have a clean process. Don't take shortcuts and you do this with quality. Take responsibility for your patients and the liability for the outcome. But ultimately we want a fast frictionless workflow. All the workflows work, find your need, find your comfort level. So if everyone's in this together in practice, you can crush the competition, I promise. So you gotta put all these factors together from the dentist, the designers, the software, the printer, the wash secure, you need it fast and efficient. So if everyone works together, your practice will crush the competition. So how do we get there? So the surgical guide design service with Sprint Ray is a game changer. Let's see what that looks like. All right, you're gonna scan, you're gonna design, print, and post-process. That's the whole workflow from end to end. The workflow is seamless to tie your hardware, your software, for an immediate customized treatment. So Sprint Ray Dashboard 2.0, 2 this is a comprehensive system that changes the way we think about in-office manufacturing workflow. So think about it. It's got an included and automated design portal that connects you with designers from around the world who could rapidly deliver a printable custom design straight to your Print Ray, Sprint Ray Pro. So here's how it works. If you take your scans and your photos, you upload them to the dashboard 2.0, along with a design request. So Sprint Ray will automatically connect you to the industry design professionals. And based on your input, really they'll design your appliance for you, then send it directly to you. And then you hit print, it's really that simple. And so you get your dashboard approval, you log in, you check it, you approve it, you look at the video if you're doing the surgical guide design, and then you send it right to your printer. It's fast, it's efficient. So ultimately, like I said in the beginning, we need to really get here fast and efficiently. This is our goal. So you're gonna submit the data, you're gonna go on the dashboard, you're gonna receive the SCL file and the full case video outline the whole specs, and then you approve it and you send it. Now let's take a look at what the time and the cost is. So $100 per surgical guide, introductory promotional prices is killer. I've used all kinds of design services, you name it, I've used it in the US, outside the US, through designers all over the world and services for this, but you're gonna pay around 200 to 400 plus per guide. It was worth the less stress of surgery to me, but we just refine and we get better with our workflows. And this workflow is amazing. It's an amazing deal. It's right now only supported for tooth borne guides. And the turnaround time is about three days. So that's still really fast and efficient. You scan a patient and you have treatment case steps on Thursday. You'll have it ready to go to print it by Monday and for your next week um, delivery. And then your printer's with uh, your Pro 95 and your Pro 55. So let's look at that one more time, a little deeper. So you're going to see the full workflow here. So 
So Rayware demo. So let's take a look. Now you're kind of tying it all together here. So you've got the design where you uh, design it yourself. If you use Sprintway's uh, design service, now you've got the file and you're getting ready to print it. So let's look inside Rayware and kind of how we manage these surgical guides, whether it be a quadrant guide or a full arch guide, how we're gonna do that efficiently and get it to the printer. The kind of tutorial demo of Rayware and the surgical guides. So first we'll bring in our surgical guides. We have a combination of a few different types. So a quadrant guide and two different full arch guides. So a tooth pulling guide and two edentulous guides. Okay, so they all imported in and sometimes they're right side up or upside down. So we just have to orient them each properly first and set our, uh, generate our supports. So typically I'll start with one and then you know, when you hold shift and you toggle, it'll rotate at 45 degrees. This one we want to flip all the way over. So we get it kind of flat and then shift and hold 45 degrees. But look at this. So that's going to be far away from the build plate. That's going to take a long time to print. It doesn't exactly have to be 45 degrees. We do kind of do 45 degrees for other types of prints like occlusal guards and so on. But for this sake, uh, for this one, a little bit less of a, a angle is, is still okay. We can print and be fast. So we got we like that. And then over here, we got the adding. And then at the very bottom, this symbol here is, is supports. And before you generate supports, you can have different types, default and road and density, low, medium, high, stretch, medium, and high, base offset, and so on. You can edit those supports. So when you have a, a thicker guide, such as a full arch guide here with covering the palette as well, I typically would put my density on heavy, a little bit more strength there, and that's kind of where it's left off. Sometimes when you open the case, it'll be kind of set on medium or whatever you had really had it on last. Um, say if I was printing a quadrant guide and set on that, and I'm printing a full arch uh, beefier guide this time, and it automatically opened from the quadrant guide. I really want to kind of switch that. So each one really is customized. So a little heavier um, support here, and then let's generate supports. That's a road. Um, sometimes uh, the road, you know, it's a little smaller. So let's do the exact same thing. Let's remove those supports and let's do the same thing, but change it to default. Look at the difference here on the build plate. See, it's a little bit thicker at the bottom, a little bit beefier on the raft. Sometimes I like that for bigger prints. All right, so we'll go with that one. So this one, same, is kind of oriented flat. It's the right side down. That's good. So we're going to do a little bit of an angle for our print. Take a look from this side. That's probably about right. And then on this one, I'm going to go back to uh, road. I'm still going to keep my supports heavy in density and then strength. Um, I'm heavy as well, and let's generate supports on that one. There we go. So you see the difference between the default and the road. The road um, is typically what we use for quadrants and smaller guides, but just for sake of example, you get an idea. Then here's the last one, and this one actually is the, on the wrong side. We don't want to print with all our supports going inside the inside, the intaglio of the guide. We want to make sure they're on the outside. So before we add supports, well, for example, if we add the supports here, they're going to be on the inside of your guide. You're not going to like that. It's not going to fit. It's not going to work. So let's remove those. So now we got them on the right side. Now we want to angle it a little bit. And then, you know, the quadrant guide, you can go medium density is usually fine. Um, and then low, sometimes a little too frail, and you'll have a little bit of, you know, not enough support. So I stick in with the medium, I really have high success with that. And strength, medium or high is fine, we'll just switch it to medium and I'll show you the difference. And let's generate supports. That's all good. All right, let's do the exact same thing, but let's do heavy and just a little thicker, okay? So it's just the, where the stems are the supports. Now, editing the supports, if you don't like where one of the supports ended up, 
say it's kind of interfering with uh, your surgical surgical guide access. You want to delete it? Totally can. So you want to delete those, but you know you can also add. You can add in areas, so you can add or subtract supports all you want. So that gives you an idea of all our supports. Now, we're pretty much ready to print. Let's go through the other toggles just to see some other kind of useful tools here. The layout, um, say I want to send it out on the platform if it was by itself. You know, um, we have multiples on this platform, so it really doesn't help us. But we'll, let's say if you want to do a duplicate, I love this, tip, this trick. So duplicate, you can go one, two, three, you can add as many as you want, but let's just say we want to duplicate one of them. And have an extra guide. I love having an extra guide on surgery day. Let's say you have, um, you know, a situation where the kind of this guy is exactly the kind of the case where maybe the head of your surgical drill is going to hit um, the adjacent teeth when you're kind of coming in um, to drill. So you want to cut away a little bit of piece of the guide. So sometimes it's nice to have extra guides just to do little adjustments and like uh, just have that that uh, disposable one or, you know, you try different ones. Okay, next toggle here will be our sizes. We really don't want to change the sizes, though they won't fit, but, you know, there are other applications for that and you can look at actual size, the parameters of it and so on, but that's usually for other things you're printing with this. We don't want to mess with it. And then you want to add any other guides, you can add more just straight up. So we don't add any more, we like this build plate. Last thing we do before we print is we will um, make sure our settings are right. So say if you just switched out your tank and you were printing uh, keystone soft material, um, you know, it'll default to the last thing that was there. So we want to switch that over, or if you're switching from your Pro 55, print off some crowns versus Pro 95, it'll, it'll kind of default to what was last printed there. So we want to be in sprint ray, surgical guide two. And then you got your layer thickness, smooth 100, ludicrous mode 170. Um, you know, 100 is pretty, pretty much where we live or anything removable, especially like surgical guides. Um, but let's apply that and that's pretty much what you'll see. And then you'll get an, an idea of the milliliters, how much you're using, going to do the actual mass and the math on the cost of your guide. Um, you can look at the bottle, how many milliliters is, how much the bottle, total bottle cost, and then break it down. Um, do your math equation for you know how much it is per guide. And you'll see it's very cost effective. But let's go to print. Um, and then you look at your time. One hour, 16 minutes on 100 micron layer thickness. All printable, we're good. For sake of example, let's switch it. Uh, let's go ludicrous mode, the same we're having fast where we have the need for speed. It's like a same day thing. We really want to get this fast and out the door. Let's apply it. Let's see what that changes. 45 minutes, excuse me, 52 minutes. So totally different. So you see all these options you can have. But this gives you an idea of what you can do with the surgical guide. Um, editing, how you're going to bring in the cases, how you're going to orient them properly, how you can duplicate them. Um, and then, you know, make sure you're printing with the right resins at the right layers uh, for whatever you want. And then you can check your speed and your actual milliliters. So that kind of gives you a good overall tutorial. Um, on the top right, um, just the last thing is kind of your orientations. If you just want to take a look at it, everything in your setup from different angles, um, pretty slick. And if you want to zoom in and take a look, you know, closer or out, it's all good, but you know, that kind of summarizes it all and we'll see you again soon. All right, clinical cases. So you kind of get the rayware now and the full workflow. So for me, surgical guides, why everyone wins, the patient, the doctor, the lab, less trauma, shorter appointments, very predictable surgeries, easier restorative solutions to go screw retain. Um, so you got everyone in the whole process that's gonna win. This is uh, from Dr. Wally Renee, one of his presentations, but really kind of just stuck to my brain. I can't get this picture out of it. You know, your percentage of air, you know, free handing versus guided, you know, we all can be very talented some days and some days it's not you, it's the patient. Sometimes the patient's cooperating, but you're just not having that, that day that you planned. With surgical guys, it takes all the stress out. I sleep so much better at night 
and uh, my cases, my my appointment times, my assistants, everyone is less stressed on a surgery day. It's just more fun. It's efficient. And things are not always that they seem to be. If you're not using guides, if you use a tooth bone guide like I used to, like a pitch on the top left, you're just focusing on the crown approach, but you weren't really doing crown down prosthetic uh, with your implant. And you got so many things in the way, your sinuses, your teeth, your nerve, all this stuff. And sometimes you look at an x-ray on the right side, it looks good. When you look on the CBCT, it's really not. So it looks hot, but it's not. You know, we got to make sure we do this right. So the old way I used to kind of get into a surgery was kind of blind. I'd do a flap and say, oh man, there's not enough bone there. But now we do a 3D CBCT and we don't have to be guessing. We don't have to guess. We can see it. So that was the old way. So this was like the old way we used to do stuff. All right. And there was so much trauma sometimes when you're laying a flap and going through all that and surprises. Don't like surprises on surgery days. No one does. So the new way is using your CAD cam, your CBCT and making a 3D printing your surgical guide. Remember I told you about a clean approach to your, to your process. So you make your virtual patient. You take your CBCT. You 3D print your guide. That's surgery day. That's so much cleaner than the first picture you saw. It's totally different. It changes the whole game. All right. So there's kind of that case extraction graft, you plan it mentally, and then boom, you execute it. We get it right in there in, in between kind of a tight spot prosthetically when the crown areas, the angles, and then we're also avoiding the sinus. So you get a, an idea of the process. Freehanding that probably, you know, if I'm having a really good day, fine all day but you know sometimes the angles can fool you and you just don't want that stress especially on a surgery day especially with anteriors anteriors will have you know it's a whole different ball game one little angle off here or there with the roots is totally different um so anterior cases uh i love 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 with 3d printing so this is Plan Mecca uh 3d printing software and we design our own guides um uh, to 3d print on our sprint ray pro but especially lateral incisors something that we commonly see there's very little to no room for error so this is what our surgical guide looks like we do a um, pilot hole or fully guided um guide in this case it's a pilot hole and we use our tissue punch and we do a flapless approach which really helps because we don't want more recession happening around those adjacent crowns um and like we can see here but it allowed us to do a flapless approach that's so key for no more recession on number nine so so on like that you can imagine if we laid a flap there you could affect it but you know you got to cherry uh, pick your case plan your case accordingly this had good keratinized tissue so i felt comfortable going with the flapless approach especially doing a 3d printed guide so we planned it in a very tight window, and then we're able to deliver it exactly where we planned it. So there's the before and after x-rays. 3D plan to reality. The post-op x-ray is exactly how we planned it. Another case, planned it, Romexis, Plymeca Romexis surgical soft, uh, guide software is so hot, so simple to use, makes it clean, easy, efficient. Plan the case, crown down, and this is what the guide looks like. You can go pilot hole guides, you can go fully guided, okay? In this case, it was when we were using keys to go through a guide. There's a better way than key fully guided, I'll show you. Or if you want a freehand, you know, a little bit after you start your angle depth position, you know, pick your workflow. So there's extraction, graft, regeneration, implant, and this is what the 3D printed guide looks like. Uh, the model, sometimes we 3D print the models to check, but honestly, I don't 3D print the model anymore. They fit. Uh, they all fit. So um, I stopped kind of doing that. But it's really cool to see the plan come together. So there's from virtual to reality, exactly how we planned it. So tying the software, all those workflows to your hardware to execute and implant exactly how you planned it is a win for everyone. You can do multiples in, in our software, plan the case, um, full arch guides, quadrant guides, you name it. Also looking at, um, you know, we talked about earlier, 3D printing uh, guides for your um, specialist um, and all the workflows. And then you'll see it, you'll read the rewards, rewards of them returning the referrals. This was that case. And we actually worked up design that didn't have enough bone. So we went back and the surgeon placed more bone than we came back and worked it up. But if I went and went through my process of 
designing everything, planning for the 3D printing guide. She may have had a surprise on surgery day and a letdown. Going through the process, we kind of knew ahead of time and we had to be able to execute the plan. This really helped me win over uh, one of the specialists in our town that I really hadn't worked with before. Kind of um, patient came to me and was working with them already. And, you know, now we have a great relationship and he's referring to us patients. It's really cool. So the whole workflow, crown down design will digitally wax up and plan CAD easy, plan the place, plan the surgery, plan the guide good angles prosthetically and surgically. And that's what it looks like. So ultimately that's the full workflow and you can get wild and crazy with it. My buddies, my mentors, I told you about are in this lower right picture, August, Wally, Donnie, they are pushing it to the levels I haven't seen before. So we're always growing and learning together, but here's the deal. If you're prosthetic or restoring a surgically um, planned implant, you're going to have less of this, you know, this was a case where you know, I had to remove a loose screw. It was a, a cement retained crown. And I found out, whoop, uh, there was actually excess cement. Look at the margin. It wasn't fully seated. It was just squished on there. It was having a problem. But guided surgery helps you have a lot more percentage of screw retained implant restorations. And we like using true abutments workflow. And they work really good. They look flawless. And this is what they look like. So they'll plan. And we'll act a little split file design and send you the, the, the file. We'll mill the crown. They'll mill the uh, abutments and they fit beautifully in there. Look at the fit of this screwmentable restoration. There's no higher level precision than giving something like this to your patient. And without the guided workflows and 3D printing your surgical guides, you're not really going to have this on a regular. This is a regular for us. And this is why we love the workflows because ultimately at the very end, your restorative solutions are there. Implant case, you can see uh, planned properly uh, on the bottom picture, the access holes right in the middle. Beautiful restorations, screw retained, much more predictable in your workflow. And True Abundant helps us with that. You can even print analog models if you want to um, adjust things or try out things before then. even bigger cases. So, you know, if you're getting into a bridge, who wants to cut that bridge off uh, if, if a screw comes loose? If you had a screw retained, you planned properly with 3D printing surgical guys, screw comes loose, it's an easy day, not a hard day at the office. And that's what that case ended up looking like. So ultimately, kind of in summary, my most fast and the most efficient workflow is using my uh, softwares and combining with true abutment. Um, and so we'll show you this and we'll close an answer for a Q and A. All right, so my fastest workflow is this. So we'll design in our software. We'll pick out our uh, implant, our Uris True Abutments, a brand new Uris implant, and they have the, the, the offsets for the sleeve built into the software. So it makes it pretty automated. And then it's you plant it, the offset's right there. It knows exactly where your sleeve needs to be. Then let's take it to the max. Let's take it to the next level. In the abutment library, you can pick the scan body. So watch this. So there's your planned outcome. There's your plan guide. And you've picked out your abutment. You got a virtually scan body. It's like you're taking your final restoration scan body scan before you do the surgery. So what can you do with that workflow? The scan body in the abutment library allows us for pre-surgical provisional restoration options. So before you do the surgery, you can have the restorative solutions. All right, and then when you get to the design of it, you have a screw retain restoration, crown down approach. But how? Because of the sleeve, the offset, and the timing. So the timing is the key. So with their system, when you 3D print a surgical guy, the timing is everything. So you match the sleeve to the end is flat, and then you have the offsets. When you drill through, you match up your everything that matches up on your 3D printed guide. That's the key, the timing how well it turns and you can go from a stock abutment a healing custom healing abutment to uh, multiple units for bigger cases so custom healing abutments is a possibility you can place the implant and already have your custom abutment milled for the day of the surgery that's so cool or you can have a pre-surgical provisional made for a temporary crown or full arch you can go all the way to the max with these multi-units you can go deeper you can just go on so 
the, the, the craziest levels of an immediate all on six implant case. And who wants to have a lab technician coming and converting and cutting a big U out of your denture. You can 3d print the denture before they get there and have the offsets and the MAU is already there. All right. And ready to go for a same day provisional. So what's on the horizon next? But that's the future. Really, none of it's possible without 3D printing. Surgical guides are fast, efficient workflows. So we made it. It's 656. It's been a full hour. So hopefully that was action packed and worth your time. But really, you know, it's all about us working together to find the best industry, the best workflows. And Sprint Ray helps us celebrate. <laughs> Time to celebrate the best is standard in your life, in your practice, in your workflows. Make sure you do it fast and efficiently. The resources for me, if you want to reach out, take a screenshot, take a picture of this. Um, sp specifically, Launch Digital Dentistry. Um, we're going to always be posting and hosting our uh, our workflows, and we're just building that content. We've had it for years with our uh, uh, events we've done, but we're just starting to kind of push it out on social media and you'll see new stuff, new content. And there's a YouTube page as well. Um, if you have a phone, take a screenshot of this, or if you're watching on a computer, take out your camera, hold it there. And the QR will take you right to it. So you can follow fast, efficient, and easily launch digital dentistry. Awesome. Well, we've got hey, some... let's do it. Yep. Let's do it. Uh, I got a couple questions here. The first one that came in relatively early was what, what's the software for the smile design? Smile design. So there's all kinds of different software for smile design. Um, I think we should do a webinar just for that. I love, uh, I've, I started with smile design, an old school approach with Christian Coachman's um, digital smile design back when he had templates and taught it in keynote. Now it's like all auto auto, um, automated so you have a design service they have or um you can do it on your ipad or on your phone it's pretty cool there's a lots of different softwares also i use plan mecca romexis smile uh, guide design it helps me with my um same day workflows um let's do a yeah just contact me and i'll show you uh and share with you my experience of all the different types of smile designs very good question great topic for another night but yes the smile design softwares are fast and efficient and really to summarize, it helps me get a very high level of case acceptance and communication with my patient. I love it. Uh, I think you showed it on one of your slides, but can you confirm what intraoral scanner you use? Yes. Yeah, so I use Plameca's Romexis, uh, excuse me, Plameca's Emerald is my chair side scanner. So we started um, with the original E4D scanner, 2008, graduated to the plan scan. We're doing pretty efficient quadrant um, CAD cam. Um, and then we graduated to the Emerald about three, three or so years ago, and we were able to integrate full arch scanning efficiently. Then the Emerald S is the newest scanner, which is just, it's just so stupid. It's not even fair. It just, it scans so well. We also have iTeros uh, in our ortho uh, divisions, and those scan really good full arch and size seamlessly for your Invisalign workflows for your ortho um, aligners. But Plameca Emerald's my weapon of choice. We've got a new 3D printer user in the audience. Uh, she got a 3D printer today. And her question is, why the angle to the guide in the printer? Very good question. Yes. And congratulations on getting your printer. You're just about to get a whole new level of uh, excitement. So when you print... Um, at an angle, you'll have less failures. So there's different resins, right? And so the different resins have different photo initiators in them. So some are kind of thinner resins, some are very thick resins. Surgical guides are a little bit thicker. And that's because the photo initiator inside the resin needs to be of a certain quality to be FDA approved for your medical um, approval for uh, use it for surgeries. So and something we didn't touch on here, but I really want to highlight. So you're, you're 3D printing it, your, your printer cures it, right? But you have to go through a post-processing process of wash and then cure properly in your, in your Procure. Um, but the angle really helps you have successful prints because some things that are just too heavy if they're not at the right angle. Um, and then also with the layers on the, the type of thickness of that resin. So you'll see different things on there on YouTube or tutorials, but pretty much um, 
surgical guides, you want to print at an angle. You don't want to print them too flat. I hope that helps. Um, I can expand on that more. Um, just, yeah, just contact me. Everything's on the screen there too. But congratulations. I think that's awesome. We just got a question um, comparing the Sprint Ray to the Formlab printer. And, you know, Henry Schein sells both, so I don't want to downplay yeah. one or the other. But do you know how the Sprint Ray stacks up to the Formlabs? Good question. I love all things digital. Okay, so you just have to figure out what works well for you and your practice. The form lab, what I love about theirs is it's automated. They have good workflows. What I don't like about it is slower. So printing technology, just simplifying it. You have a light source coming through a vat of resin, your pool of slime, and it cures it. With a form lab, it's a laser. Think of a laser pointer. Like if I was doing a lecture in person and I'm pointing at a screen, you have that little laser pointer, the one you put on the floor to have the dog chase around, right? That you're only point, you're 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 print, you're curing very fine points at a time to build that model. So therefore, it takes longer. Okay, DLP is the technology in a sprint ray. It cures a full layer at a time. So no matter if I have one or fifteen models on my build plate, like you saw on that ortho. Um, picture it doesn't change the speed of the print and a sla a lot longer so i have the need for speed fast efficient workflow so dlp life it is for me how do you get the metal collar in the 3d printed guide yes yeah, so there's different manufacturers of the collar so um or the uh, guide sleeves um we use a brand called steco because Honestly, it's in my guide so software and it's just the choice. So when we three, when we plan the guide, you have uh, the option of picking out which sleeve you want in within your software. If you're designing yourself, say I'm designing in Plan Mecca Romex's um, surgical guide module. We plan the offset of the implant where the guide sleeve is and we paint, and then we have a drop down and pick the manufacturer, just like we have a drop down where we pick the manufacturer type size of the implant, we pick the sleeve. But I use Steco mainly for my pilot hole guides or I'll use the brand sleeve from the um, from the implant uh, manufacturer itself. And the, the best sleeve, y'all, um, is integrated with their implant is True Abutments, uh, Uris implant, their guide sleeve for their pylon kit. Their, their workflows for digital just speak my love language. It's all seamless and integrated. And I try to kind of show that at the end. Those sleeves are timed. So you can do the pre-surgical or visuals and they fit and they go in. That's wild. That, that blew my mind at first a few years ago. But yeah, the sleeves, uh, you either get them straight from the implant company or, you know, from the manufacturer that's listed on the drop down menu with the options on your design software, um, whether um, or if you're outsourcing the, the Sprint Right team um, will provide that kind of concierge for uh, service for you. They, they'll, they'll, you know, make sure you get the right sleeve. Right. And how do you actually attach the sleeve to the guide? Do you physically glue it or is it somehow different? Yeah. So that was kind of a mystery for me too. At first, I'll be honest. I'm like, how do you get the sleeve in there? I, now I've printed the guys. I got these sleeves. I didn't know what to do with them. Um, some of them, depending on the design of the sleeve, the shape, um, they'll friction grip in there. And if you have your tolerance of your print, right, you kind of get lucky. Boom. Some of them have a lip where it friction grips in there and it sits on top. Um, most of the time, what I do is I use flowable resin and cure it in. You know, remember, 3D printing is all basically a vat of pool of slime that it's, it's all like flowable resin that you're curing to build a model. So um, we take our sleeve, we'll put a little flowable around it, we'll put it in the guide, we'll stabilize it, we'll cure it, clean it up. We use flowable. We've used super glue in the past, but I just don't think that's, you know, as biocompatible, even if it's a little tiny bit, but flowable resin is the trick. Uh, let's see. Can you print a trial snap on smile for a case presentation? Yes. Um, especially when we talked about the smile design stuff, man, we should do a webinar just on that. I love that. The smile design workflow for me just to kind of, you know, we'll, we'll 2d, you know, with the pictures and the simulation on the pictures, and then we take it to 3d. So we'll take it our smile design, overlay it, whether we're designing or we'll send it to our designers for three shape or exocad. Um, and then we 3D print that model, right? So we use that model that we've 3D printed to make a putty wash over it. And then we can try it in. If it's an additive case, they can try it in right there. Um, if it's a subtractive case, you can't really try it in. You got to show them on the models, you know. Um, but a lot of cases, you can try it in right there. And that's the uh, trial smile, the emotional appointment that connects with the patient. They get to wear it, see it, their spouse or a sibling there. And then they, the case acceptance is really high. 
Um, go back to the original part of that question. I want to make sure I tied it all up. Uh, hold on. Let me find it here. Uh, it was. Oh, uh, 3D printing the. The, um, the snap on. The snap on. Oh, yes. Yeah. So when I talked about the very first CEO, Bago, um, you can you can uh, have your designer export or print, uh, uh, export the file of shells. And so you can reline that and try it in, or you can reline it on a prep day um, for a fast, efficient provisional. But if it's additive, then yes, you could you could try to 3D print it to, to pop it on for your trial smile. But honestly, I just I 3D print the model, do the putty and try it in. It's just easy. That's just my workflow right now. But you could. All right. Well, that is all the time we have for this evening. So thank you, Dr. Tolbert, for your time today and really appreciate you stepping in here at the last minute. Uh, and thank you to Sprint Ray for sponsoring tonight's webinar. If anyone has additional questions about 3D printing, please email us at webinars at henryshine.com and we'll connect you with a representative in your area. Additionally, if anyone is interested in attending future webinars, visit henryshinedental.com slash webinars for our upcoming schedule. As a thank you for attending today, everyone will receive the recording via email later this week. I'd like to thank you all for joining us and we look forward to seeing you back here on future webinars. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye.